And Captain Cernan, you, you put it best when I spoke to you earlier today. You, you know, I remember, Captain Lovell, you said that you remembered that you could hide the moon behind your thumb. You, you said to me today, it felt like you could just reach out and take it home with you. You know, first of all, the, the Earth that Jack's talking about, overpowering beauty, was captivating. You know, as busy as we were on the moon, you had to steal an involuntary look over your shoulder at the Earth. And one of the things about the landing, you know, I don't want to go through the whole thing, but it was a pretty busy time. The ground's talking to you, Jack's talking to you, and you're looking at needles, you're looking at where you're going to land, you're, you know, you only get one shot. 14 minutes of probably the most dynamic period of time in a human being's life until you get down there where Jack crawled to dust. But the whole time, out the window, I'm, I see the Earth. And it was hard to take my eyes off it. It's that imposing on you. And, uh, and I've got, I, I got some different views from other people maybe. Uh, and I've always felt there were two space programs, one in Earth orbit. You fly around the Earth every 90 minutes. You fly over a city, a, a, a river, a lake, uh, across the ocean in 15 minutes. You're lucky you might get a glimpse of your own hometown. But you're only 150, 200 miles away f from home. When you leave the Earth and you accelerate to some 25,000 miles an hour, and Jim knows exactly what I'm talking about, it's a different space program, not just technologically, but philosophically, and, and I use the word spiritually as well. And we all have our own views as we look back. and and and. Not to, you, 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 you go out there and that Earth grows smaller very, very, very quickly as you head out to the moon until, as you all saw on Apollo 17, Jim Laval and Tom Hanks did indeed put his thumb over and he blotted out his identity. I call it your identity with reality. That's everything you know, you understand, your past, your family, your love, your, your, your emotions, the future. That's it right there. We, you know, I sort of look at it, Jack, as we lived in a world of science fiction. It was a temporary environment for us to live and work and enjoy and whatever. But uh, I, when I say, I don't mean this to be religious by any means, because you can dress your God in whatever way you want him, him or her. You can call him by whatever name you want him. But for me, spiritually, it was like I was sitting on God's front porch for three days of my life, looking back at a small part of his creation. And that's just the way I felt. That's a feeling I had then. I went to the moon twice. I had that challenge. I, I felt that way on my first trip without landing, because you're that far away. And when I really got the, had the ultimate opportunity to be on the moon, just reinforced what, I, what, what my feelings were that I came home with. Phil, there were two. Uh, I found very intriguing bookends to the, to the mission. Uh, the, the, the Earth orbit part that Gene referred to, as we were in our first orbit over the United States before we left for the moon, uh, the, the whole country was almost entirely covered by clouds, uh, except for Florida, where we had left. And as I was looking down on Miami, a shooting star went across beneath us I miss over that Miami. One. <laughs> I miss that. And three and a half days later, we were when our first orbit around the moon with the the uh, so-called dark part of the moon illuminated by Earthlight. And I was looking near the crater Grimaldi. Some of you will know where Grimaldi is. And just above Grimaldi, I was watching, and there was a flash of light. A meteor had hit the moon. So I not only saw a meteor go underneath us, I saw one hit the moon before we ever landed there. And those are sort of two observational bookends that were really very intriguing to me. It really lets you know that you're someplace different. <laughs> you know, I, again, one of the significant things that we mentioned tonight is that we never went back. And Captain Lovell is your friend of many, many years, but I'm going to ask you to be an impartial observer tonight. Would you let people know just what was the significance of this mission? And, 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 and since it was the last trip to the moon, what should we take away from it? Well, I kind of think the significance of Apollo 17 was really the capstone of the Apollo program. It consequently it involved and encapsulated in one mission, three days, just about everything that we 
had planned to do, we wanted to do, and we accomplished. So in, in reality, it was sort of closing the door on the, on the Camelot, really, of manned spaceflight as we knew it at that time. And we never, you know, we never dreamed, we knew it was the last trip to the moon for the time being, but we never knew, dreamed it would be four decades till we went back. I wonder if we could start with you and just have you reflect on that and just sort of where do you think we are now? And I'd like to hear from all three. You really don't want to take me there, do Well, you? Remember, these, <laughs> remember these folks do, they, they're, they are supposed to have dinner tonight, so. <laughs> Although I'm sure you all would gladly give up dinner to hear more of yeah. this. So. You know, it's, uh, it, it, we're all speaking for ourselves, I think, for the most part, but uh, it's extremely disappointing. Uh, to, to refer to what Jim said, we should have been the encapsulation of everything that happened before us. We built on what they did. We built on our mistakes. We built on our successes. So Apollo 17, we didn't have any problems. No. The only problem we had, the only scare I had <laughs> on Apollo 17, you saw it in this movie, Jack yells out, orange soil. <laughs> I knew right then and there we'd been on the moon too long. <laughs> I knew right then and there he'd been sucking up too much oxygen. <laughs> but you know, uh, it, it's, it's disappointing. We knocked, we, you know, it was a period of time from 13 years of my life, but from Shepard in 61 to Apollo 17 and 72, we busted that door to the future open. We busted it open for those walking in our footsteps to go on through it. And here we are, literally four decades later, and we can't even get a, an American into space on an American piece of hardware. We've come full circle, taking the leadership away from the old Soviet Union to giving it back to them a half a century later. Now, what's wrong with that headline? You know, we had a headline, uh, American, steps foot on the moon. And now the headlines are, golly, we're sending clean laundry to the space station. What's wrong with that? That's, where, that's what bothers me tremendously. And we haven't been afraid to say it. Uh, you know, what we've said publicly uh, has been challenged by a lot of people, but that's just what we believe.